Miss Minutes, and it's my job to catch you up, so let's not waste another minute. Settle in, sharpen your pencils, and check this out. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. The Loki producers revealed a bunch of deleted scenes in an entire deleted storyline they decided to remove from Loki Season 2 involving a much, much bigger version of the new Kang Multiverse War. It would have been a completely different storyline, way more cameo scenes, obviously, so we'll break it down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We're doing episodes every week. We're also doing the Loki Blu-ray giveaway too. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and just let me know what you want them to do with Loki in the next couple of Avengers movies. Careful for spoilers for everything on Loki so far. This video is mostly about deleted scenes and storylines, so I don't really consider that spoilers. But currently, Loki Season 2 is about Loki, Sylvie, the other TVA characters cleaning up the damage to the timeline in the TVA they caused in Season 1 by killing He Who Remains and freeing the Council of Kings in the wider multiverse. That was the whole idea at the end of Season 1. If you think I'm bad, wait till you meet my variants. See you soon, as in the Council of Kings was going to show up right after that. During the actual Loki Season 2 episodes, this whole timeline is broken storyline they're visualizing through the machinery behind the sacred timeline, just saying that it's breaking down, basically. It can't handle all the extra multiverse timelines. And if it does break down, all of time will collapse, basically causing the destruction of all reality so past, present, and future would start existing simultaneously, making it way easier for them to explain why dead characters come back in the next Avengers movie. Thought we wouldn't notice, but we did. Coincidence? I think not! We see what you're doing there, Marvel. You thought we wouldn't notice, but we did. But no matter what the story was going to be, we knew that Loki Season 2 was going to set up Avengers 5 King Dynasty, Avengers 6 Secret Wars. Loki was always going to be at the center of all that. But once Marvel decided to make Kang the new Thanos big bad in the next Avengers movies, they basically started setting up the Council of Kangs as the next major overarching villain. But here's where we get to all the deleted scenes, deleted storyline. According to the Loki producers, when they started making season two, like a couple years ago, they had a completely different plan for the Council of Kangs and how everything would lead into Avengers 5. The main reason why they had to change the plot is because of the pandemic delays, rescheduling all the movies, so everything was coming out out of order from what they originally intended. Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania ended up getting released before Loki season two, and originally Loki season two would have come out first. Their original version of Loki Season 2, like all these deleted storylines, would have been mostly about the actual Kang multiverse war. We would have seen the actual war going down in each episode with the different Kang variants fighting for supremacy. War, and it's on its way. And maybe it's true. Everything he was doing, the pruning, the preservation of the sacred timeline, it was about preventing more of him. There was no simple choice. There was no other way. So in Loki Season 2 Episode 1, like the actual version that we finally saw, Loki goes on and on telling them stories, telling them about the Kang multiverse war, like war is coming. We would have actually seen that playing out in each episode. Immortus, Rama Tut, Scarlet Centurion, Victor Timely, Mr. Griffin, Dr. Doom King, like all the others on the Council of Kangs, there would have been many of them, way more than we're actually going to see in Loki Season 2. There'll still be some Kang variants that we'll see, but not nearly as many. The producers also kind of confirmed my theory back when the Loki season one finale aired. So a couple years ago when the finale was first released, Loki comes back to the TVA. Nobody remembers him. He sees the Kang statue in place of the timekeepers. My theory at the time was that the Kang multiverse war had broken out again and all the Kangs were fighting each other. And at the moment, another Kang, like the Kang the Conqueror variant, was winning and had taken over the TVA and was using it to destroy other timelines. The producers pretty much confirmed that originally they intended for the plot to be something closer to that concept. Loki comes back and the Kang multiverse war has broken out again. They're in the middle of it because the battle is happening across all points in the timeline. Past, present, and future is total chaos. Nobody knows what to do. Then Marvel shifts the release dates for their Marvel Phase 4, Marvel Phase 5 movies. Ant-Man the Wasp Quantumania comes out before Loki Season 2 and suddenly it doesn't make sense for that statue to be of Kang the Conqueror because they wanted it to seem like Ant-Man killed him at the end of Quantumania. So then they had to change the plot for Loki Season 2 and just created the time-slipping storyline and said that Loki had time-slipped in his own timeline back to the beginning of the TVA and they said that at that time, he who remains wasn't hiding his identity so the statue was of him. Like they had to find a way to explain why this looked like Kang. I think their original idea for Loki Season 2 was to introduce that main Kang the Conqueror variant that we saw in Quantumania. The Kang Multiverse War rages throughout Season 2. We see a bunch more of the Avengers characters cameo. The Kangs vie for supremacy. 
Then when Ant-Man the Wasp Quantumania was still happening after Loki season two, they would explain how the Council of Kangs exiles that main Kang the Conqueror variant to the quantum realm where Janet Van Dyne finds him, explaining how he wound up in there. Because when the movie came out, there was a lot of hand waving, like, why did you get exiled? What happened during the Kang multiverse war? Like that would have happened during Loki season two. Then the rest of the Ant-Man Quantumania plot picks up the way we saw it in theaters. So that seems like the first reason why they changed Loki season two so much, mostly scheduling. It wouldn't have made sense for him to disappear in Ant-Man the Wasp Quantumania, then show up as a major villain in Loki season two. The second major reason why they deleted all those multiverse war storylines and scenes is because of a larger shift inside Marvel behind the scenes, also because of budget. This will make sense in a second. When Kevin Feige decided to hold that Kang multiverse war storyline from season two and save it for Avengers 5 Kang Dynasty to do the Avengers level version of the Kang multiverse war. Think about it this way. If we'd actually seen the multiverse war going on in each episode, it would have been cool. Would have been a really awesome storyline. Way more cameo scenes, way bigger, way more epic scope, way more multiverse shattering consequences. But there's no way they would have had the money to spend on it they would have needed to to actually do it right. They decided they wanted to do an Avengers Endgame level version of the Kang Multiverse War, which requires hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars, way more big characters, just generally way more people working on it than they would have had for Loki Season 2. This is also one of the reasons why they decided to turn that Iron Man Armor Wars TV series for Rhodey into a movie. There's no way they would have had the budget to do it on an actual TV series. So it sounds like a lot of all these changes went down right after Loki season one ended. They started with this Kang multiverse war season two idea, but then quickly pivoted when they decided to use Kang as a much bigger character, the Council of Kangs, for the next two Avengers movies. Marvel did not go into Loki season one knowing that Kang would be the next Thanos level villain or the Council of Kangs. When they first cast Jonathan Majors, they only cast him to play He Who Remains. He was only written as He Who Remains in the script. There were no references to Kang at all. All the Kang stuff didn't really happen until very late in the process after Kevin Feige saw the actual footage of his performance in the Loki finale and Marvel took a hard turn into the Council of Kangs. Like, oh wow, we could actually use him as our next overarching villain. Loki season two is still setting up Avengers 5, Kang Dynasty, Secret Wars, setting up Deadpool 3, couple other things. Loki's still very much central to everything in this multiverse saga of movies, like everything in Marvel phase four, five, and six. But it's just interesting to see how like one thing changes and then the storyline for all these different movies has to change at the same time on a dime. Probably one of the reasons why they had some story issues behind the scenes in Marvel Phase 4 and Marvel Phase 5, just them changing things so quickly. Let me know in the comments if you think they made the right call saving all the Kang multiverse war stuff, the Council of Kangs for Avengers 5 and Avengers 6, or would you have rather seen that play out over Loki Season 2 in a much smaller form? Keep in mind, this would have actually meant using a totally different villain for Avengers 5 and Avengers 6, and there aren't a lot of Marvel characters that are big enough that they've set up enough that could fill that role. The Celestials, maybe, Galactus, maybe. They would have had to introduce Galactus way sooner. He's supposed to be one of the main villains in the new Fantastic Four movie. That's still coming out in 2025 before Avengers 5, so they still are doing Galactus. There are actually a bunch of deleted scenes of Galactus in Thor Love and Thunder, so it sounds like Marvel was toying with that idea of using Galactus in a bigger way as a bigger villain for a while before they developed all their Marvel Phase 4 movies. But here's the thing, this actual deleted scene of Galactus in Thor Love and Thunder is of him fighting Jane Foster's Thor, and it was meant to take place after she first got the hammer and started learning how to use it, being Lady Thor. There was a time jump during that movie, if it wasn't totally clear. She was supposed to have been Lady Thor for almost six months when Thor returns to New Asgard and sees her for the first time. Like, wait, what? There were a bunch of her adventures during that period they would have shown in a montage, including this Galactus scene. It sounds like at the time, Kevin Feige just decided to take Galactus out of the movie and save him for the new Fantastic Four movie, which I think makes more sense. Like, he debuted in the Fantastic Four comics. He's mostly thought of as a Fantastic Four character. This would have been a much more comedic, jokey version of Galactus. I don't think fans would have been quite as happy with that. And Marvel pivoted so hard and fast away from the Eternals movies, they kind of relegated the Celestials to the background of this overarching story at the moment. It sounds like early on, they decided against using them for the next Avengers movies. Like, you know what? Maybe we'll just hold the Celestials for a while. You have to imagine that version of Avengers 5 would have been like the Celestial host and Ayrshin the Judge returning to Earth to judge it, just wipe it from existence. So the Avengers, or the new Avengers, form to try and stop them. But how do you fight giant god-tier creatures? You'd have to have the god-killer armor. Like, it'd have to be the big Iron Man twist where Rhodey finds the god-killer. They probably still would have done Secret Wars for Avengers 6, but they probably would have just made it more of an X-Men movie. There'll still be a ton of X-Men characters in the actual version of the movie that we'll see in theaters, though. 
But it sounds like Marvel just pivoted into the multiverse storyline for all these next Avengers movies way harder. And in the original version, it would have been quite as much that. The Council of Kangs right now, currently the big bad, but they're only going to be the main villain through Avengers 5. Marvel always planned to move past them when they got to Avengers 6. The rumor right now is that it'll be like a Beyonder type character because we're talking about Secret Wars here, like that 1980s and the more modern version. But the rumor is that that Beyonder will be just another Kang variant. Here's the thing though, early theory, would you rather actually see them give that role to a Loki character, like make Loki the overarching antagonist in Avengers 6 Secret Wars and give him the God Emperor Doom storyline from the newer Secret Wars? So that it's not reversing all of Loki's character development, he becomes a Loki who remains, so like he lives for millions and millions of years and it changes the way that he thinks and he winds up trying to save the multiverse but that turns him into more of an antagonist. So even though he's trying to save everyone, he becomes the antagonist again. That would be something that Marvel would do if they wanted to pivot away from the Kang character. Like, we've done enough with the Council of Kangs, we want to move past that, we want to move past Jonathan Major's version of Kang. Secret Wars isn't coming out to like 2027 at the earliest, so they have plenty of time to figure that out. Post all your theories in the comments below. In my Loki Season 2 Episode 3 video, we'll post after they release it. Be sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss that. Click here for my Episode 3 video, I'll update the link as soon as I post that. And click here for my full Loki Season 2 Episode 2 video. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.